Rainbow Warrior here, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet this big billowy hood. This is inspired from the elf character Toriel from The Hobbit, and this idea came from a viewer. So thank you so much, and I apologize in the delay of this tutorial. So hopefully you enjoy. Let me show you what you need, and let's get started. I am using a size I or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook because that is what is recommended to use with my yarn. And my yarn is Red Heart Soft in the color Dark Leaf. And I'm mainly using it for the color, not necessarily for the yarn type. It is a medium worsted weight yarn. We're going to begin our project with a slip knot. Place your slip knot on your hook. And I'm going to begin with a foundation chain of 25. For our chain stitch, we yarn over and pull through to create one chain stitch. And this chain is going to be what reaches from the back of the nape of my neck to the top of my head. If you need to make a different size hood or if you're using different materials, such as maybe a chunky yarn and therefore a bigger crochet hook, be sure to check out the link to my blog which will list all the pattern, measurement, and gauge information. Alright, I did 25 chains and I'm doing plus 2. And then going to begin half double crocheting in the third chain from the hook. For our half double crochet, we yarn over, we enter our loop, yarn over and pull through a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three of the loops on your hook. And we are going to half double crochet all the way down this foundation chain until we get to our last chain stitch. Here I am at my first chain and we are going to place three half double crochets in this chain. So think of this as our turning chain. And this is going to be the top of our hood. We're going to do this increase for every row to shape our hood until we're satisfied with the shape and the length. Now we're going to half double crochet down the opposite side of our chain. And I'm going to lock my tail in as I do this so I don't have to sew it in at the end. In my project, I have a total of 26 half double crochet stitches on each side, and my 27th stitch is my top chain or my turning chain. Alright, and if you wish, you can of course place a stitch marker in your top stitch because we're going to need to be identifying it each row. Now that we're at the end, we're going to chain 2 and turn our work, and now we're going to half double crochet all the way down. And as you can see I skipped a space because that chain 2 is counting as a stitch. So placing a half double crochet in each stitch until I get to that top chain or that top stitch in my hood. Here you can see our increase from our last row. And again, we're putting three half double crochets in our top stitch. If you need help determining what is your top stitch, you can either keep count as you crochet, or of course you can use a stitch marker so that you can keep track of that for each row. So here is my top stitch, and I'm going to put my three half double crochets in the stitch. So we're increasing by two stitches for each row. There's one. two, and three. Alright, and now we're going to half double crochet along the other side of our row until we get to the last stitch, and then we're going to chain two and turn. And this row is going to make up our pattern for the majority of our project. So you're going to continue along half double crocheting in each stitch, placing three half double crochets in our top stitch, 
and crocheting along the other side. At a point, I'm going to stop increasing. I have 14 rows here, and I want to stop increasing because I'm satisfied with the shape of my hood. I really like um, the look of it when it's on my head. However, I still need more rows in order to make my hood big enough. So from here on out, I'm simply going to half double crochet in each stitch. So no more increasing. And again, the purpose of this is if I kept increasing, my hood would get just really big and really floppy. Did a few more rows of half double crochet, and here you can see the increase of my hood versus where I just straight crocheted. And now what we're going to do is we're going to fix up the edging along the bottom of our hood. So we're going to place two more half double crochets in our last stitch and this will help us turn around to work along the bottom of our hood. So there's my one in my last stitch. I'm going to place two more in there to help me turn. There's one and two. And now I'm going to place a half double crochet stitch in each row. So for every row we made, we're going to put a half double crochet stitch in there. So there you can see my rows. And I'll show you a few stitches so you can get an idea. It's kind of hard to tell where to put the stitches, but don't be too technical with it. The whole purpose of this is to get rid of that ugly edge and give us a nice crochet edge. So you should have at the end an amount of stitches that is equal to your amount of rows for your hood. Alright, so that edging makes the hood look so much cleaner, and there are a few ways you can end this project. Of course, you can keep it as is. This hood looks great, and you can add two ties on these ends here so that you can simply tie it like a bonnet. Close it up that way. However, I'm creating a bottom to my hood, so let me show you how I do that. I am going to chain 12. And I kind of played around with this to see what was the right amount of length for what I wanted. This is going to connect both sides of our hood together so it's underneath our neck. So make sure you see what works right for you. Again, I am chaining 12 because that's the length that just happened to work out with my hood. Okay, and once you have the right amount of stitches, we're going to simply slip stitch it to the other end of our hood, entering that stitch on the other side, yarning over, and pulling through. And so here you can see how long I want the opening of my hood to be. And now I'm going to do a round of half double crochets. And I'm going to work in a continual round. If you want to, you can use a stitch marker to keep track of the start of your round. Or of course you can slip and chain if that's how you prefer to work in a round. It's up to you. So I'm going to go all the way around and crochet in each chain stitch as well until I come back to my start. I am starting my second round and I'm working in a continual round so I'm just going to start half double crocheting in my next stitch. And on this round I'm going to work in the front loop only and this is optional. You can do this if you want your work to be nice and flexible rather than it being super stiff. So I'm going to do my following rounds going through the front loop only. As I mentioned, there are multiple ways to finish off our hood. I'm working in, in a continual round. However, you could also work in rows and connect the two sides with buttons. Or again, you could tie it at the bottom just like so. So I just wanted to mention that just in case you did not like the way that I was finishing this. 
Alright, so if you wanted, you could do a few more rows and the hood would just have a little neck piece. However, I want the piece to continue down on my shoulders. So I'm going to do an increased row. And for my third row, I'm going to be putting two half double crochets in my first stitch and one half double crochet in my next stitch. And I'm doing this all the way around. I'm still going through the front loop only. And this way this bottom piece will drape over my shoulders rather than just being around my neck. Alright, and here you can see it begins to flare out to give us a bigger piece. And as you can see the ribbing is on the inside so that we can't see it. And for my fourth round I'm just simply going to half double crochet in each stitch, still going through the front loop only. And if you want this to be really big, and if you're making like a cape, or you want it to drape all the way down to your shoulders, after a few more rows, you're going to have to do another round of increase, so that way it will fit. Alright, and here is my finished piece. I just worked as many rounds as I could until I ran out of yarn. And to end, we are going to slip stitch into our next stitch, yarning over pulling through and pulling that yarn all the way through and then to hide that little bump and to end our work nicely we're going to go through that second stitch from where we ended go through both loops back to front and pull through that tail just like so and now we're going to go through our last stitch the back loop only from back to front just like that, and pulling through our tail again. And this makes a nice stitch that covers that ugly bump. A nice way to finish our work. Alright, so if you make this project, please be sure to send me a picture on Facebook or tag me on any social media. If you would like to see a written pattern, please be sure to check out the link below in the description. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the pattern, and subscribe to see future videos.